We have a serious problem yet today. And the problem is with the vacuum cleaner, which stinks every time we now use it. No one wants to use it anymore. And why? Because it makes you feel sick. And it leaves a real stinky smell in your home afterwards. Well, don't worry, be happy, as I'll be discussing all of this in detail, plus showing you how to, with basics, solve this problem and more. Coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Tim here again with another How To With Basics, bringing you tips and tricks needed in getting all those basic things done in and around the home. Now, let's get the show on the road. Firstly, a little food for thought. Most of us have a car, and every 20,000 kilometers or 12,500 miles, we service it, right? But we don't always do the same thing with all our other equipment. And then we wonder why they don't work properly, break down, or in this case, they smell. We are at all times guilty of this in one form or another. Let's meet Henry. He's a pretty dirty, smelly vacuum cleaner. And because of that, he's not feeling too well. So we're gonna help him feel all perky again. We'll start with a little health and safety warning. Firstly, Henry is full of dust and potentially bacteria as well. So, if you suffer from allergies, for example, dust mites, then possibly what I would suggest if you're going to be working with a dusty vacuum cleaner is just take a little bit of Vaseline and just rub it on the inside of your nostrils. Secondly, here's also an electrical appliance. Now, working on anything electrical, we need to protect ourselves from getting a potential electric shock. Right, to do this, first of all, we need to ensure that Henry is switched off and then unplugged from any electrical wall socket. Now we go on to the causes of smell. What could possibly cause a smell? Right, there's one of four things. First of all, a full bag. Secondly, dirty filters. Thirdly, a canister which is full of dirt or even bacteria buildup. And fourthly, the hose and attachments also has dirt or particles in hair particles and further bacteria buildup. Right, let's just discuss those four main causes of smells in a little bit more detail. Firstly, the full bag scenario. Now, a full bag will smell if it has been left with dirt in it for a relatively long time. Think of it like a garbage bag left in your cupboard for a few days. How's that going to smell? It's not going to smell too healthy. So my first tip is don't wait until the bag fills up, empty it or throw it out into the garbage where it belongs. Then. If your vacuum, vacuum or hoover is bagless, then simply just make a habit of emptying it periodically or throwing the bag out. Second point, dirty filters. Dirt and bacteria will stick to the filters. That will naturally cause an odor to develop, similar to that of your garbage bag. Now, if the filter is made of fabric, a woven fabric, then you can soak it in lukewarm soapy water and just rub it gently with your hands. You need to then ensure that once you have washed it as well rinsed out, leave your filter out at least overnight and make sure, 100% sure, that your filter is dry before putting it back into your machine. Now, when you come to reinstall it back into the machine, you need to then please check, examine your filter. If there's any signs of deterioration, and when I say deterioration, if there are cracks or slight tears in it, then replace them. 
because then the filter becomes non-effective, which in turn then will affect the machine's health as, as well as yours. Now, depending upon the brand of the machine, you may have to change these filters every three months. We take the Henry vacuum cleaner as an example. And in this case, the Henry machine will call for a six monthly change. Now, I do say it can be longer than six months. Because remember, the manufacturer is going to specify a period, a safe, a safe period. However, what will de depend the change of this is going to be the amount of work that the vacuum cleaner is doing. Plus, what are you vacuuming up? If you're going to be vacuuming up grit and dirt from outside, or grindings from, uh, from, um, from cutting bricks or tiles, it's very, very abrasive. That's going to be hard on the vacuum cleaner and your filters. Normal dust within the home, you'll find that your filter will last 12 months or possibly more. If the machine has a paper filter, obviously you cannot wash a paper filter. They cannot be washed. All you can do is shake the filter out or you use compressed air to blow the dust and dirt out of the filter from blowing from the inside of the filter out. And once again, you need to inspect your filter. If there's deterioration, or you could see the papers cracking, or slightly torn, discard it and replace the filter. Thirdly, we move on to the canister. The canister is what I would term as your garbage bin. It's naturally going to harbor smells. So it will require cleaning on a regular basis. Now, if there are no electrical parts attached to the canister, it can then be washed once again with lukewarm soapy water. You can take it, put it in your bath and give it a good scrubbing. Use disinfectant as well. Why do I say that? It's because it's going to harbor bacteria. Secondly, you need to inspect the canister for any cracks or deep scratches within it. Any crevices such as those will then trap bacteria, will get into the crevices and build and grow within it. Right, now let's move on to the fourth item, are your hoses and attachments. Now, these are the first parts of the machine that come in contact with the dirt. I cannot stress this enough. They are the first parts. Now, the head attachment, as we know, and we've done it ourselves, where the head, when, it's, when, when they are vacuuming, what will happen? They'll push the, the, the head along the floor. There could be a damp surface or a bit of wa uh, water on the floor. They'll push it over it. What then happens? As we have a vacuum, it's going to suck this moisture and some of this dampness up through the head and up the pipes, which is naturally going to create moisture within those components. Furthermore, the vacuum head, likewise, we know on the floor is not only dust, mainly within a kitchen or a dining room area, and you vacuum in either the tiles or the carpets in, in that area, you're going to have traces or droppings of food. Naturally, that too is going to be sucked up through the head, up the pipe, and into the canister or into the drum. Now, remember what I've just previously said. If we have any moisture within those components, and then we're sucking food up those components, the combination of moisture and any particles that you're sucking up, be it food particles or dust, is going to adhere to the moisture. It's going to stick. Once it sticks with a warm environment that we have within those components, is going to become a beautiful breeding ground for bacteria. They're going to have a party, guys, 
and they are going to breed. And what's going to happen? We are going to get a beautiful smell of stinky bacteria coming out of our machine. Right, we're now going to go into just having a closer look at the machine, at the parts and the basic uh, procedure as far as going over the, the cleaning, cleaning of it. We'll open up, we'll remove the top of the vacuum off where, as I've discussed, we have earlier, we have the cyclone unit, which is part of the electric, electric motor. Now, when we remove this, it is imperative that we have a good look around the edge of, of, of the unit where it seals onto the canister or the drum. Make sure that it's clean. Um, if not, give it a good clean. Now, do not use any water here because remember, this is where your electric motor is. So we can only use a dry cloth or if need be, we can use, uh, once again, a dry uh, brush and just give it a light brushing and to make sure that if there's any holes or crevices that all dust has been um, removed from it. Right, we can put this aside for, for one minute. We then go to the next section, which we now find the pre-motor filter. Now, when I look at Henry's um, filter, as part of Henry, being a very stinky, and I claimed a dirty, stinky vacuum, this filter is still looking in mint, and I say in mint condition. It is clean. It really is clean. There's one or two very small little marks of dirt on it. So here, one could say, do we wash it or not? It becomes a judgment call. If not, we just make sure we give it a slight good brushing to ensure that it is nice and clean. If need be, you can give it a bit of a smell to see if it really stinks or not. Now, I need to be careful because I suffer from hay fever and this is great. Even though, yes, I have put uh, Vaseline up my nostrils. We'll then move, move on to the next part, which is the drum or the canister that holds the bag. Now, immediately, when I look at this, I can see straight away, this bag has not been changed for a good while. Yes, I did lend the vacuum out to someone, and uh, obviously, I don't know what they vacuumed, but they have filled this bag up where you cannot put anything more in. So, what is important is let us very carefully remove this bag out. But now be very careful that when you're lifting, you're not going to get dust and dirt scattered all over your work surface or inside your home. Ideally, you would do this outside. Then use a black refuse bag to insert your bag into. and just give it a good tie at the top because you're not wanting those smells to filtrate through your home. Now if we look on the inside of the canister, the inside of the canister is in very good condition. There is a little bit of dirt. It's, it's not severe. Um, there are no cracks or cuts or tears or any crevices where bacteria is going to build up. I'm going to take it and give it a good wash and I'm going to sterilize it. Uh, then, then move on to the next section um, that from the canister we have our hoses. Now, you could have a blockage as well within the hoses. How do you get a blockage out of your hose? Well, quite simply, if you use a standard domestic broom, you'll find in most cases that a domestic broom handle will slide into the hose um, of your, your vacuum cleaner and hence you can then push the dirt out. Right, the next part we'll look at is the 
the vacuum head. Now, we need to examine this very closely to likewise make sure that there's no blockages within this area. Now, this head doesn't have the rollers. If your machine has rollers and you're going to find the carpet fibers and, and hairs are going to wrap around the roller, you can battle to, to remove them. The easiest that I have found is just, and very, very carefully, take a scissors and cut the fibers and then pull them out. Secondly, to make sure um, that there's no dirt stuck in there, um, or to clear a blockage, you could either use a metal coat hanger. Now, a lot of countries, and, and here in Ireland, you can't buy um, wire coat hangers anymore. So what I generally use, I use a stiff piece of electrical cable, and I'll take it, I'll insert it in, 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 into the head and I'll push, push it through to clear any blockage. Now, this can also be washed and if need be submerged in Luke's soapy, soapy water and also with uh, detergent. But, providing it is um, all plastic with no metal parts. If there's metal parts, you're going to get rust or corrosion. In such cases, the only thing to do, give it a good clean, give it a spray of disinfectant, and then wipe it down and wipe it dry. But with this one being all plastic, I can very, very safely take it and give it a good wash uh, in lukewarm, soaky water. Right, guys, that basically brings us um, almost to the end of the video. Um, but I want to mention a couple of um, added points. Once your filters have, are all dry, your machine is, has been dried out, and you come to reassemble, I always say, let's give the machine that little bit of extra TLC. Um, and this is, is a valuable tip um, that I think um, you will enjoy. Now, here, what I normally do is, you can either, from the local um, supermarket, you can go and buy um, an air freshener, but it must be the dry type, not the liquid, liquid one. Get one of these. And what you can do is buy one of those and take it, put it into your canister, then put your clean bag in, over it and put your filter on the top. A freshener inside there is going to emit the nice pleasant smells of the air freshener back into the room, which is just going to give your room that extra little bit of sparkle and slightly nicer smell. However, some people are allergic to air freshness, whether it's the aerosol type or non-aerosol top, for example, like good old Glade here. Now, another alternative, which is, I suppose you could consider, is a healthy alternative. Um, and that is, get yourself a bottle of um, Olbos oil. Or, you could use any one of the essential oils. Quite simply, you take the oil and just put a few little drops of it on your filter. That's not going to damage your filter. But likewise, what it will do, it will emit a nice smell into your home. Now, if you do have an allergy, and you, the Olbus oil aroma coming into the room is going to really help with your sinuses and help to clear it. So it's basically a double Ed sword here. And lastly, another even cheaper alternative is to use either lemon or orange peels. Take that, throw that into the bag and or also into the canister. Once again, you're going to get the aroma coming from the peels. Right, this now brings us on to the question of the day. Do you have any tips 
on solving a smelly vacuum cleaner? Well, let us know in the comment section below. And remember, the best tips and conversations happens from the Back to Basics community in the comment section below. Cut. That brings us to the end of today's video. And I do apologize that it has been a little drawn out. I do also apologize that I've now started to sniff. Thank you very much to the dust of Henry here has now given me, in spite of me using a bit of Vaseline that has helped, it has given me the sniffles and the odd sneezes. So I apologize for that. Okay. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you have learned something new here today. And if so, please leave a comment below as your feedback is important in improving the overall quality of the material that I will be presenting. Now, if you know someone that could benefit from this video, then please share it with them as your help and support is really appreciated. Now, don't forget to click the thumbs up button below, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time with another How To With Basics. Bye.